a chef isn't just a guy who cooks behind the stove. Mm. He also cooks your favorite Yonka commander. Mm. And in today's video, let's talk about exactly that. What's up guys, Gambly here. And in today's video, we're finally back on the Sanji agenda. It's been a off with an analysis on the character's strength. And it's been a minute since I've done this, so let's talk about everything Sanji has. Starting off with strength, our boy is pretty strong. Even before his numerous power-ups, which we'll go into in a second, Sanji is still able to damage the likes of Queen, who is regarded and stated himself to be the third toughest on the Beast Pirates behind, of course, the Oni and the Lunarian. Yeah. Despite this statement, Sanji is able to consistently damage him, but there's also an underlying problem in all of this. In Chapter 1028, we see Sanji hit Queen with a named attack, to which it, of course, damages Queen, but despite this fact, he gets up immediately and Sanji himself complains about Queen's durability. The fact is, Sanji doesn't have the AP to do lasting damage to Queen, let alone have the AP to take down the Calamity altogether. This same thing will continue happening with Sanji repeatedly hitting Queen, to which Queen would cry out in pain, but instantly recover because the attacks aren't heavy enough to put a stop to him. This is until chapter 1031. In this chapter, we see a new Sanji. His eyebrows are flipped and he's going through a mental breakdown because he might have just harmed a woman, something he vowed he would never do. Once he comes to the conclusion that it was the raid suit that did this to him, he destroys it, makes a promise to Zoro, and finally locks in on Queen. Right after this, he perception blisses him, which we'll talk about in a second, and then he hits him with Hell's Memories. This attack was actually very effective, and despite Queen's quick recovery from it again, we found out that he was just continuing the durability gimmick. What I want to put emphasis on though is the fact that this was Sanji with his eyebrows switched. In that mode, Sanji's attacks have more weight because on top of the heat from his kicks, mm -hmm. he has an exoskeleton. This is consistent because after this, every single kick Sanji lands on Queen deals way more damage than it did mm -hmm. before, having him drop into his knees and all sorts of stuff. This is cool enough. That's what I'm saying, like, well, whenever you go in that mode, it, it makes his attacks heavier and stronger. So, you know what I'm saying, like, attacks that are heavy, most likely will be really strong, powerful attacks to where it will wear you down and do damage from each hit. And it, it, that, that could be in any anime, but especially in One Piece. Because you got people like uh, Jiren from Dragon Ball Super. We saw that his attack was super heavy and powerful. You got Kaido, you got Big Mom in this, you got shoot, you can even say the Giants. You got Luffy, bro, man. No, but Sanji wanted to take it up a notch, and he created Ifrit Jambe. With his exoskeleton and arm in hockey, Sanji is now able to withstand hotter flames. And so with that, he's able to produce blue flames to not only increase mm -hmm. his speed and whatnot, but his attack power as well. With a couple of kicks and a named attack, Sanji put Queen on his ass, kicking him off the entire island. Yes, sir. Before we continue, I've seen people try to say that this is nine named attacks. What? Come on, brother. Don't be silly. Sanji's AP feats don't stop there, though, because we enter Egghead Island and he's able to box with a Seraphim, which in itself isn't that much of a feat, but he was cooking S Shark, and while I won't sit here and act like he damaged him with his flames on, it was at the very least stunning him. Luckily, we have a better feat in Sanji kicking a Keizaru laser out of existence. People argue about whether or not this is it for Jambi, and to be honest, I really couldn't care less if it was. Mm. This is still a great feat, and Kizaru's reaction was priceless. Sanji goes on to spam it for Jambi, using it whenever he wants to, and at the time of this recording, he just used it in base without his eyebrows. This is a testament to his hockey because, as I described earlier, Sanji's Ifrit Jambi is a combination of his firepower, exoskeleton, and hockey. Mm. This means that his hockey has in all three of those. It's a great combination to his attack power and defense. Bro, that's what I'm saying, bro. Sanji is stronger than you think. That's what I'm saying. Like, Sanji, in terms, in terms of power, even without conquerors, he's like, he's up there with Zoro, bro. He's up there with Zoro in power. That's what I'm saying. Like, Zoro, Sanji, he don't need conquerors. He don't need conquerors, Sanji. I don't think he would get it. I mean, it's theorized that he might awaken it in Elbath. 
But like, eh, it's unlikely. But Sanji don't need it though. Improves so much that he can withstand blue flames without the exoskeleton. This might be foreshadowing to a new power up though. Who knows? Moving on to speed, this is Sanji's most crazy stat, and Oda sure. continuously tells us why this is. Before his awakening, Queen literally could not touch Sanji. Sanji was putting the works on Queen while Queen had to just sit there and take it. Anyways, this was the case for almost 10 chapters until chapter 1023. This is the chapter where Sanji's movements become so weird that Zoro himself has to ask what's up with him. In response, Sanji tells him that he's been feeling weird since he last put on the raid suit. Sanji's movements were holding him back so much that he actually starts clashing and getting caught by Queen directly. No, this wasn't a testament to Queen speed. As Sanji's on the floor, he says that his movements are definitely weird, but he recovers and blisses Queen right after. This is cool and all, but let's get into the crazy stuff. In chapter 1031, Sanji is what we like to call Awaken. And with this new power, Sanji himself states that he gains super speed from it. The first thing he does with it, in base by the way, is disappear from Queen's perception. He does this not once, but twice. Oda was really trying to convey a message here. I put emphasis on the fact that Sanji was in base because in each jumpy he has, he gets faster. This is stated multiple times and shown to us directly. I wanted to bring this up because for some reason people think that Sanji increasing his speed with the jumpies is a mistranslation. I'm just cold. For it, I'm really so, so, so I've been told. What is that? <laughs> If this scene from Eni's lobby was the only piece of evidence we had, I would have taken it seriously. But then we get Sanji saying the exact same thing when he uses it for Jambe. Another thing I want to mention is the fact that Perception Bliss and Queen is actually impressive, no matter what these people tell you. Let me break down my thought process when I gas this feat because I don't think I've ever done that before. The gas from this feat comes from what Queen himself is able to perceive. During his fight with Marco, Marco enters his hybrid form, which should be his fastest form, and Queen is easily able to perceive him while being attacked, even though he does still get blitz. This is Queen in base, and Queen in hybrid form is able to use the Lightspeed Blade Henry Queen. The name speaks for itself, to be honest. Anyways, this would imply that Queen's strongest form, hybrid, is at the very least able to perceive even more than his base. And guess what Sanji does to him twice in a row? outspeed his perception. One contention could be made about the manner of Sanji and Marco's blitz, but there was no difference. First off, Sanji- That's the thing, it is, I mean, Sanji is, I'm not saying for sure, I mean, not for sure, but like, he a bit faster than Marco. Marco as, as a phoenix, Sanji, he can move faster than, than Marco, for sure. And whenever Sanji, it's, it's literally, Sanji can move faster than the whole perception of another person. Like, come on now. Come on. I mean, it, it was it was basically like not it, it was basically foreshadowed before Wano. Like during Whole Cake Island, he did the same thing with Oven. He legit moved so fast that he vanished. He attacked Oven without Oven I, I like actually seeing him. He legit hit Oven while actually seeing him. And he rescued I think what I think it was Lola? I think I think it was Lola he had rescued at the same time. He attacked he attacked Oven at speed of light, rescued Lola, and got out of there. Just like that. Which is within a few seconds. And Oven got up. He got up confused. Like, who attacked me? Who was fast enough to attack me? While, while him even seeing. Like, bro. Like, Sanji, bro. He been at speed feeds before Wano. It's just Wano it was more projected. Because he had to fight a whole Yonko commander. Who was the left hand. Of, of, the, of Kaido. He didn't have a reason to try in Perception Bliss Queen the first time. He was just fast enough to do it. That logic can only work for the second Bliss where he wanted to match what Queen was doing with pure speed. In fact, we literally see the nature of Sanji's Bliss. He didn't pull up behind him to attack, he deliberately kicks him in front of him. Mm -hmm. Sanji does this in his awakened base form and he only gets faster with Diablo Jambi and Ifra Jambi. 
Next is durability, and that's another stat that Sanji increases drastically after his awakening. Before his awakening, Sanji's durability wasn't anything too crazy. He was getting cooked by Black Maria, but of course, that's because he wasn't using any hockey to protect himself. But then after he awakens, he's automatically able to tank and- Me personally, I don't really- Man, I don't really count the whole Maria thing, man. I don't count that. I mean, we all know Sanji's running gag within One Piece. And it's going to keep continuing to the end. And even so, even when he let his, like, he let his guard down, now he's now he no hockey. And just getting straight up punched by Black Maria, who, who's a big, giant character. Yes, he, he was bleeding and everything. He, he, he took some damage. But it wasn't like life threatening to where he would like lose. <clears throat> and think about the minute he escaped, I mean, not a minute, the minute he got rescued by Brooke and Robin, I mean, he was fine. He was practically fine. Like, he was like just adjusting himself and then just ran away to go do something else. And, like, she, she, she did damage, but like crazy damage. Like, come on now. An off guard slice to the neck, breaking the sword in the process. Being off guard is a huge thing in One Piece. Mm -hmm. It's why Odin and Luffy died to Kaido. <clears throat> when you're off guard, you don't have the proper defenses up to go against an attack. Odin and Luffy didn't. <clears throat> Damn, sick. Odin and Luffy didn't die to Kaido. Against Odin, he knocked him out unconscious. And he let his guard down. Luffy, he got snuck in the process. And Kaido hit him with the attack. He didn't really get... Um, he let, well, he, he let his guard down. He did let his guard down. Because of the, the CP0 agent that came out of nowhere and distracted Luffy. And then Kaido, he hit him in the, in the whole process. Despite this fact, Sanji stands there and breaks a sword on his neck. He then goes on to do more things like tank bullets and Dirt Queen's onslaught. But my favorite thing to talk about with Awakened Sanji is his feat against S Shark. S Shark is stated to be a user of Fishman Karate, something Jinbei himself says and demonstrates is durability negation. Despite this fact, Sanji stands in front of a Fishman Karate punch and takes zero damage. This is proof that Sanji has a slight level of resistance to durability negation, but who knows, maybe it depends on the power level of the attacker. Finally, we have to talk about his hacks. OG Rest's gambler watchers know that I never go in depth with this part unless needed, and in regards to Sanji, his hacks are pretty self-explanatory. He has Armand Hockey, Observation Hockey, the ability to fly, an exoskeleton that boosts his durability, mm -hmm. speed, and strength. He also has his different jambes, the Yabu Jambe and Infra Jambe to boost his speed and strength as well. Sanji also has a type of regeneration. He's able to heal all of his bones from being broken almost mm -hmm. instantly by just hitting them back in place. This of course is exclusive to his awakened state, however. But with all that said, I've gone No, that's that's any time. Isn't that not exclusive to his awakened state? He can do it at any time. If it's if his his leg is, like broken sideways he can just adjust it to to back to <laughs> to the basic he has been on type of mode to recover over sanji's abilities and now it's time to find out if sanji can hold a candle to the likes of the yonko commanders yes, i'll list out all the yonko crews rank them and go according to that the yonkos consist of kaido big mom whitebeard luffy blackbeard and buggy now, I ranked them by how much I wanted to talk about the crew, not by strength, because that's what? a little too much work to think about. Also, how? Shanks, well, you'll see at the end of the video. Hate YouTube ads? You need this Chrome extension. I feel like I just found a Google cheat code. This Chrome extension? With all that being said, let's go into the first Yonko mm. crew, the Beast Pirates. We just fought against these guys, so I think it was the most logical to go into first for this video. The Beast Pirates, very luckily, is a meritocracy, which means that the ranks are defined by skill and strength. Essentially, the Beast Pirates hierarchy looks exactly like this. We've got the Fodder, and then we have the Flying Six, who are stronger than the Fodder, but weaker than the All-Stars, and the All-Stars are the strongest behind Kaido, the King of Beasts. With that said, we have three All-Stars who represent the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Command, King, Queen, and Jack. So let's go into Jack first. Jack is a very funny guy. He was the first character with a billion bounty we ever saw in the story, and so because of that, everyone thought dude was a mega monster. He is. 
don't get me wrong, but when Wano started, things just didn't look good for him. <laughs> First off, Jack has a grand total of zero AP fees, and literally all he does is get his ass beat and get up. Uh -huh. When Cat Viper and Dog Storm jumped him in their Sulong form, they literally incapacitated him. And after getting up again, he got defeated by one of them. Cat Viper and Dog Storm are equals, and while Jack was getting cooked by one of them, the other defeated Perispero. Now, this isn't to say that Jack and Perispero are equals in any sense of the word, no. but the matchups all make up one conclusion. Sanji victim. Sanji was already bossing with Perispero tier characters before the raid, and then he went through multiple powers to defeat a character stronger than Jack. It's not close, put a W on the board. Speaking of a character stronger than Jack, we have Queen. Sanji cooked this guy and obviously he'd do it again with less difficulty, but how exactly is that? Like I established earlier, Sanji had no trouble hitting Queen and avoiding his attacks, even before his awakening. The problem he ran into was his lack of AP, which made up for tenfold in just the Yabu Jambe while awakened. Each attack he landed on Queen while his eyebrows were flipped devastated him. And don't even get me started on it for Jambe. A new fight against Queen would just be Sanji blitzing him multiple times over, landing a ton of kicks on him without Queen ever being able to hit him back, and eventually just damaging him to the point where he can't go on. Tool for Sanji. Next on the pecking order is King the Last Lunarian. I've been waiting to get to this because this was a video I made actually a while back. Now, before I go into whatever I said over there, I want to preface this by saying that King is that guy. He has speed, he has AP to a certain extent, and he has durability. Mm -hmm. That was he has most of all, but his endurance? Holy crap. Zoro unlocked advanced conquers hockey, hit Queen three times, and he fell asleep. This was of course in his flames off mode, but Zoro even goes on to imply he can damage him even with his flames on. I'm not gonna sit here and act like- I mean, yeah, he can. Because Sanji also has flame attacks. Even before the awakening. He had flame attacks to where, you gotta remember, with his, the strong, powerful flames, he can damage you from the inside. He can. Like, it can burn the inside of the other body. So, you can have a strong outer body, just like the king and queen and Kaido, but it, it doesn't stop you from getting damage from, the, from, from within. We saw that with Law ability. We saw with um, Luffy with his Ryu. As advanced conquerors, like Sanji can still damage King with his flames. He can burn it inside of a person. Sanji can do the same, but I don't see a reason why Sanji wouldn't be able to do it with his flames off. And that's the entire premise of Sanji versus King. Can Sanji damage King with his flames off? Yes or no? If it's yes, then we have to go over speed. But if not, Sanji can't damage him, and King will just outlast him. With that being said, going into speed, the main thing I brought up was the fact that King and Queen's observation hockey, and by extension their perception, was relatively ass because they both couldn't sense Sanji while he was invisible. Mm -hmm. Sanji also clashed with flames off King before any of his power-ups, so there isn't a world where King is just faster than Sanji. Heck, Zoro himself has reacted to flames off King multiple times in situations where Sanji would just go invisible. With all this being said, Sanji can damage King and he can also outspeed him, so Sanji logically should be able to put the Lunarian down for good, just like he did to Queen. Put a W on the board. Now that we're finished- That is true. But even though King has his speed form, I mean speed mode, with the flames off, but Sanji is still faster than that. He's still faster. Like, come on now. With the beast pirates it's time to go into the second yonko crew taken down during wano the big mom pirates the big mom pirates have three yonko commanders snack cracker and smoothie so without a further ado let's start with snack snack was one of the three sweet generals but he lost his spot off screen but we know the reason why sometime during the time skip oruge one of the supernova entered big mom's territory unsolicited and so came people trying to stop his pursuit the first to pull up on him was Snack, and he seemed to have a good fight with Rouge, but he ended up falling to him. So Snack just blatantly skills below a mid time skip of Rouge, which makes mm. him easy work for someone like Sanji. We barely have any scaling on a Rouge. I mean, yeah, I mean, he did lose to a supernova, so that's not really like embarrassing. And then we, it took Luffy, Luffy using Gear 4 to actually defeat him. But you gotta remember, like, 
Cracker he got way stronger than when a Rouge fought him. He got Cracker got way stronger. He he could literally create a whole army to where the 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 Cracker army could wear a person down like Luffy like he did Luffy, wear him down, make him lose all his stamina. That's what he could do. He could wear down people so he he could attack towards the end. But obviously it didn't work on Luffy, obviously. And Cracker is now and like now he looked at as mid now because he lost to Rouge, and he lost to Luffy, and then he lost to Akiji and and what's name again? And and I think what name is Van Van Auger. Yeah, Van Auger. Yeah, like they, they no they, they really they really have no diff though. But the fact that this was during the time skip, so it's likely he didn't even have hockey, makes this all the more pathetic. Plus, Luffy and Hoke Island goes on to be an even stronger opponent, and our current Sanji at the very least scales above this Luffy through his feast against an even stronger enemy. TLDR, Rouge isn't that guy, and he still managed to take down Snack, so Sanji, who is that guy, would do the same with less effort. That's 4-0. Next is Cracker, the strongest commander that Luffy went against. Now, this isn't as easy as just saying Sanji is stronger than Whole Cake Island Luffy because Cracker's abilities are actually insane. One of Cracker's armors was pushing Luffy to gear 4. This doesn't mean that they're gear 4 level, of course, because as soon as he entered it, he was one-shotting each of them. Mm -hmm. The fact is, you need at least gear 4 levels of AP to one-shot his army, and you need speed to not only one-shot the enemies, but get to the actual Cracker. Luckily, our guy has both of those criteria fulfilled with flying colors. Luffy clips his gear for beginning of Whole Cake Island self multiple times over by the time he reaches the rooftop. By the Wano arc, after having a long, grueling fight, he comes out stronger because of not only the island boost, but his hockey boost. He gets one shot by Kaido and isn't able to damage him at all, yeah. then by the rooftop, he's able to outperform himself in base. This is relevant because Luffy was fighting a Toby Ropo and matching with another Toby Ropo before his rooftop debut. And Sanji defeated a character stronger than both by a significant margin. Sanji can not only one shot all of Cracker's soldiers, but also in base without awakening. Queen can't touch him, and Sanji's easily tagging him. So Cracker, who scales below Queen, would easily get blitzed by Sanji without any power ups. Mind you, Cracker himself states that he creates armies because he himself cannot endure pain. One base kick from Sanji might just one-shot him. That's 5-0. Next, we have Smoothie, and this one's as bad as Snack because what the hell does she even do? We That's the thing. I mean, the Beast Pirates, <coughs> he being auto commanded except King going on one. And then B Villain Pirates, it's pretty obvious now, especially now. Bro, Sanji, he could beat Katsukiri, Cracker, Smoothie, Oven, that, that genie guy. Bro, we know of like two attacks from her, and off the top of my head, there were her base devil fruit attack, which is drying out people, and her second attack, which is just using the power from dragging out people as projectiles. These are the only things she does, and the only thing going for her for real is the fact that she ranks above crackers, so she should be stronger than him. With all that Yap said, Smoothie still cooks Sanji because she's a woman, so put an L on the board for Sanji. The Blackbeard Pirates are up. See, that's the that's thing I hate too. I, I hate that that Sanji had this gag throughout the anime. It's like it's like an automatic automatic loss to any female character within One Piece. Smoothie, Boa, uh, yeah, uh, freaking, uh, dang, he loses any female character. That's crazy. Even when he's stronger than them. That's crazy. Up next, and this might be the most annoying one here. For this crew, the three commanders I'd be down to go over is Burgess, Shiryu, and Aokiji. Oh. And so starting with Burgess, this is a complete slaughter. Burgess' most prominent fight was against Sabo, in which he got absolutely embarrassed. No, his dumbass didn't even use hockey against his downfield ability and got mollywopped off screen, then knocked out by one fire fist. Sanji does the same with zero difficulties, and his new devil fruit abilities do nothing to change it. Put a W on the board. Next, we have Shiryu, and this one is also super left. Patel is charged with misrepresentation. From top to bottom, Fort Bend Democrats. That's a turn. Shiryu was actually introduced as an equal to a guy you probably forgot about, Magellan. 
Magellan is some bum that pre time skip Luffy while super fatigued dropped to his knees. That doesn't matter, however, because we entered the time skip and he comes out with a devil fruit, the one that turns him invisible. Now, first of all, before we even go into how their stacks work against each other, mm. we have to establish some things. One, if your observation hockey is good enough, you can sense him, like Garp did in Hachinosu. Two, Sanji literally knows everything to note about the fruit he has and has been shown to just flat out counter it back in Thriller Bark. And three, which is kind of just one in another font, Sanji can sense Shiryu. We saw him do it with Queen. With that being said, Shiryu got almost one-shotted by a slam into the ground by a weakened garb with zero hockey. Sanji might unironically kick his face off. He also doesn't have the luxury of catching Sanji off guard because Sanji can sense him and turn invisible himself. From there, Sanji would just hit him with a couple you know kicks and Shiryu was out of the game. 6-1. And, and people saying that Shiryu is like a end game opponent for <clears throat> for Zoro, like like, like like Zoro final sword but that he had to fight. Like what? Shiryu is not, bro. He, he I'm not saying he's completely weak, but he's not like, man, he's not a strong character like that. Like, arguably, you want to be real? Just off of feats and what we see in the anime and manga, Jinbei will beat Shiru. Just off of feats and what we seen like Jinbei as a fighter. Like, come on now. Jinbei probably beat him, bro. Jinbei. The final commander to go over is Aokiji, and we finally have an actual fighter. Sadly, Sanji just can't box this guy. Aokiji is not only boxes with Garp, but he was equals with Akainu to the point where they fought for 10 days. Mm -hmm. For reference, Luffy fought for half a day and unlocked Future Sight and power clipped himself multiple times over. Then on the rooftop, he hockey boomed multiple times, unlocking Conqueror's coding and then getting it to the point where he could split the sky. 10 days of fighting and with extreme relativity is no joke. The levels they breached were probably monstrous. With that being said, that alone puts him above Sanji, with Sanji's only saving grace being his speed, which <laughs> Aokiji doesn't have to worry about because he's an endurance monster. He'd also just be able to freeze Sanji on impact and finish him off with his monstrous physical capabilities. Put it all on the board. Next is the crew you guys have. That is true. I mean, Sanji, he can clash with any ammo, but I don't think he's not being, not being them like Kazaru and Fuji. He arguably beat Green Bull, not gonna lie. But against Kuzan, nah, he ain't gonna get Kuzan. Even though Sanji has blue flames. That's the damage of Kiji. And I think, even though, like, Sanji, he can go toe to toe with, with Kiji. Because he has to fire the flames to burn the eyes easily. Both are durable. Sanji, he, he's faster. Kiji got the IQ and the Devil Fruit and the Hacks. So, I mean, I think. I think Kuzon what extreme div Sanji. High to extreme div. Can you remember? Sanji had the fl blue flame. He could melt, like, he could burn the ice. I've all been waiting for the Straw Hat crew. Of course, Sanji himself is a commander on there, so I'm not about to do Sanji versus Sanji. So instead, we'll just do Jimbei and Zoro. Obviously, we're not about to put Frankie against Sanji. Frankie cooks it. Jinbei versus Sanji is a fight I went over in a video as well, and this, for some reason, is unironically talked about. I used to think it was satire from Zoro fans, but there are actually people who think that Jinbei can beat Sanji. So let's get into no. it. Jinbei's best stat is his strength, and it at his max was able to push back Big Mom. Yes, this is the feat that allows Jinbei to box with Sanji according to people, pushing no. a fat character back. No, not damaging her, and no, we don't talk about her weighing less than usual. The fact is, he pushed her. That's all we need. All right, all right. Jinbei's actual best feat is his punch on Who's Who, which showcases Fishman Karate. He demolished him, and I don't expect anything less from our Shark Boy, but that's where the fun ends because, for one, I've already established that Sanji has resistance to Duranek, and more specifically, Fishman Karate. 
Jinbei also couldn't blitz a character who's weaker than the character Sanji Perception Blitz. And the icing on the cake is Jinbei's durability. The guy got cut through his armor man. <laughs> he got cut through his armor man. Yeah, it's true. Sanji Perception Blitzes and one shots him. Enough said. 7 2. Next up. That is true. That is true. Hey. When Husu tries to speed blitz him and attacking him, and he'll do the finger pistol, and it was making Jinbei bleed through his arm man. That was crazy. But even though Jinbei, he won the fight, like, mid-diff. He won the fight mid-diff. Mm, yeah, he won the fight mid-diff. Then say, Sanji is, come on now, he's stronger than Jinbei, bro. Stronger than Jinbei. The speed, attack power, durability. The only thing Jinbei has over Sanji, I'll probably say the IQ. Because Jimmy been around longer. That's the only thing he has is IQ. Like, bro, I'm taking Sanji, Omni Haki, and, and his observation. Come on now. Up is the swordsman of the Straw Hat crew, Roro no Zoro. This is a, a matchup. The hell was that? <clears throat> this was a the, 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 the matchup. Why is it this? All right, you know what? Let, let's just move on. The second to last crew on the list is Wiper's crew, and this is a special one. Ha, I get what he was trying to do. I'm making it glitch because it's Zoro. And it's not really an argument for her. Like, I mean, it's a, you can debate it, but like Zoro, we all know Zoro, at, at the end of the day, is going to be Sanji in one on one fight. Zoro will literally like high diff, high to stream diff Sanji. Like, come on now. Sanji durable, but. I don't know, he don't be handling, he don't be ha like, if the handle all those cockroach coated slashes, I could cut him up. Because we can actually pinpoint four commanders. If you didn't know, Wiper's crew isn't set up like the others. What's actually the case is that the powerhouses don't really go by the ship numbers. The powerhouses in question are Vista, Jozu, and Marco. However, I said four because we can add Ace, another powerhouse, into the equation. So with that, let's get into Vista. All right, from the moment I call out the names of the commanders I was referring to, you probably noticed something. These guys got nothing outside of some off-screen altercations. These are the box with Mihawk for a little bit during the war, and people try to use this against Mihawk, but I think it's just a sign of respect. I mean, we've seen Mihawk one-shot people he wanted to one-shot, playing around with people he wanted to play around with, so what's to say he can't just give Vista a good duel? What supports this is the fact that Mihawk literally knew who he was. Why would he go out the way to one-shot a swordsman he actually knows? Regardless of all this, the only other thing dude has is a combo attack with Marco not getting outpaced by him. So we can say on occasion he can match Marco's speed. Sadly, Marco's speed isn't too impressive when it comes to Sanji as we went over earlier, so Visa just gets cooked. 8-2. Excuse me, where is your hot sauce bar? We don't uh, have one. Okay. Firehouse Subs has one. Next is Jozu, and this is another case of just not knowing enough. What needs to be said is that Sanji may not be able to break through his diamond armor very easily because mm. it's diamond, but I don't doubt that in Fijambe he can combo through it. With that being said, the only things of note we have from Jozu is him damaging Aokiji off guard, and that's it. Sanji can't be hit by Jozu under any circumstances because he's just faster than him. And with what I said earlier, I think it's safe to assume Sanji just takes the win over the Unbreakable Man. Put a W on the board. And I think too, like to me, like Joseph, he he he's like a, a straight. I mean, well, he's way more of a defensive type of character, bro. With a diamond fruit that adds durability to your body automatically, coat your whole body with straight diamond, the, the strength of diamond, and then you have the arm in the hockey. And his physical strength. That's crazy defense. But what I think what Sanji would do against I got like um Jozu. Sanji will wear him down with all those all those powerful flame attacks. And he will crack through the, the diamond. Because of yeah, remember Sanji arm in the hockey is stronger than his. That's the thing. The blue flames. With the, the exoskeleton and arm in the hockey, he's cracking through the, the diamond. Ace is up next, and this is such a funny thing to go over because this might actually be an even worse mismatch than Shiryu versus Sanji. Ace's power is fire, and Sanji's power is fire, but 
Sanji is the one with actual resistance to fire. It's the reason he's able to use it for Jambi, and at this point, actually spam it whenever he feels fit. Ace's fire would never damage Sanji because he's endured hotter and more powerful flames. Mm -hmm. Ace, on the other hand, was getting his ass handed to him by Blackbeard's base physical attacks. This isn't to say that Ace is weak or fodder, no, but the fact of the matter is, Sanji completely counters him in everything he does. Sanji probably cooks him with it for Jambe. 10 2. The final Viper commander to go over is Mar. That is true. Hey, it's a good fight. It's a good, for sure going to be a good fight. But Ace being in low gear and Sanji having strong arm in the hockey. And then the durability of two like two flames. Now, you got to remember. Sanji Blue Flames is stronger than... Uh, it's crazy to say. It might be crazy to say. But Sanji Blue Flames is stronger than Ace's Flames. And we all know if Ace has the, the fire fruit. It's crazy. Then I think I think Sanji Flame Blue Flames. His Blue Flame is probably stronger than Sabo Flames as well. Even though Sabo is stronger with the fruit than Ace. That's the thing. Because, yeah, remember... There's different levels of flames. You have the regular flames that, that, that Sabo use and Ace use. Then you have the blue flames. And then after blue flames, you see that you got black flames. Black flames. And you know, if Sanji was get if Sanji was get black flames in his arsenal, bruh. I'm not gonna lie. The attack power will go top tier. I'll put him in the top tier. He already have high attack power. I'll put him in top tier attack power. I remember. And what what if he had the, he had the blue flames? I mean, the, not blue flames. He had the black flames, and it, it could burn like incinerate certain targets. Like if you're too weak to handle the black flames, you could burn away the target. Imagine. Marco, and this is another matchup I went over on my channel before. Marco is an endurer. He doesn't have AP, he has endurance and hacks to sustain him. The thing is, when he gets cooked beyond his ability to heal and recover, he cannot keep up. The only thing that Sanji, a character who's faster than him in his awakened form without any fire, has to do is either riddle him with attacks too heavy for him to handle or beat the crap out of him until he can't heal anymore. Mm -hmm. Either is plausible as we saw Marco's limit being reached and from then Sanji would finish the fight super easily. 11-2. The final crew to go into is Buggy's crew and they have two commanders of no, Crocodile and Mihawk. I that thing too, yeah, I had Marco versus Sanji. That's the thing, Marco, he has Phoenix Flames. We know Phoenix, Phoenix Flames are rare. It's a rare breed, man. But, uh, <laughs> he is not beating Sanji, bro. He is not beating Sanji. Sanji is too strong for him. But, the fight will go a long way, though. The, the fight will go a long way because of Marco Endurance. And his, his recovery and ability. Crocodile got cooked by pre time skip Luffy, got out of jail, and was clashing with Mihawk and Dofi. And then we got a time skip, and we're currently at a point where we really don't know how strong he is. His bounty is super high, but I don't really want to get into the habit of using bounties as a power scale. With that yeah. being said, assuming we just use the Marine 4 version of him, the strongest version of him that we see fighting, Sanji absolutely demolishes him. Sanji vs. Dovi isn't close, and so by extension, Sanji vs. Crocodile wouldn't be either. 12-2. Mihawk is literally the Yonko of Buggy's crew. He rivals Shanks in the current day, and Zoro, Sanji's own rival, still admits inferiority to him. Enough said. Now, you may be wondering, what about the Red Hairs? And to that, I would ask you, why are you even worrying about that? I was complaining about Vista and Jozu, but at least we've seen them do something. We've literally seen one thing from any red hair commander and it's Yasa blowing up a ship. Yep. I'm not going over that. At the end of the video, Sanji ends up with a score of 12 to 3. His I'm not going to lie to my my opinion. I, like The red pilots are for sure top tier on the strongest crews. They're one of the strongest crews within One Piece. Arguably the strongest because of Shanks. But dang, I don't... 
I'm not gonna lie. We got the we got the Yasa. I'm not gonna lie. Like we saw Yasa. We know his shooting is top tier. But I'm not gonna lie. I think Sanji will beat Yasa in one on one fight. I think so. I'm not gonna lie. And Lucky Roo, and Lucky Roo being theorized as a fast character as well, with that size. I'm not gonna lie. See, Lucky Roo the left hand man. So it's gonna be a perfect matchup. Like between the two. But, uh, I think Sanji for sure beat Yasa. That's what I think. <laughs> he beat for sure. He, he for sure beat uh, st a rock star. He for sure be the medic. I say he be the medic as well. Are the redhead pirates? Bosses include a girl who he can't fight properly and two Yonka level combatants. He dominates everyone else with his overwhelming speed and strength, though. What did you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Mm -hmm. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. What the heck? Yeah, man, that's that's. That's what I'm saying. It's pretty good, though. Oh, snap.